So I've been spending a lot of time lately thinking about silicon. Uh, it is an amazing mineral. It plays so many different roles in a plant. I have a whole list of benefits that I want to talk about. Uh, but if you haven't had a chance, please check out the podcast I did with Dr. Wendy Zellner. Uh, I just went back and listened to it three times just this week because there's so much information in it. And it's a lot to take in. Uh, silicon seems too good to be true. In a lot of ways, it really is. Uh, she makes the argument for the fact that it should be an essential plant mineral. And I definitely agree with her based off of everything that I've been learning. So I'm going to do a series of three posts. This first post is just talking about all the benefits. It's going to be the longest. The next one is going to be the different forms that uh, silicon can come in. And then the last one will be uh, what products can we use and how do we incorporate them into their, our garden and what sort of availability can we expect in, start, in terms of SI percentage. So let's start off talking about benefits. Uh, the biggest thing about uh, silicon is it mitigates plant stress. Um, research has shown that it helps, it, it, it's, it's involved in a ton of different enzymatic reactions. Um, it can help the immune system respond more rapidly to pathogen pressure or disease or reduces enzymatic stress from heavy metals um, and keep them from moving into the cytoplasm of the cell. Uh, there's recent research that I did another interview on that showed the 70% uh, reduction in powdery mildew uh, when using uh, wollastonite, calcium silicate, and raising the silica levels in uh, hemp plants. Uh, it improves stem health. Everyone hears that, everyone's heard of that, that SI helps with a thicker, uh, higher quality stem, which provides lodging resistance, um, enhances UV tolerance. Uh, people talk about heat heat and drought resistance. Well, this is interesting. The way that silicon does this is by reducing transpiration. And you think, oh, well, we don't wanna reduce transpiration in most cases, this would be a bad thing. But what it really does is it helps extract water from the soil and then assists in holding that water in the leaf tissue by forming the silica cuticle double layer, I believe it's called. And by reducing transpiration, this helps give better drought and heat tolerance. So the mechanism of action there is actually really interesting. Um, it helps reduce salt stress through inhibition of sodium and chloride uptake and increases uh, efficiency of potassium uptake. Uh, it raises pH, which helps reduce heavy metal uptake. It also improves um, heavy metal accumulation and retention in the root and accumulation in the endodermis. And this is important in cannabis because uh, when we're consuming or harvesting, it's the buds and flowers. So we would rather have that arsenic, for example, be located in a part of the plant that we're not gonna be consuming. And this is an argument um, unrelated to silica of removing root material and removing stems and stalks, not chopping and dropping. And there's many different plants that are hyper accumulators, uh, bamboo, rice, and, uh, and cannabis, ca ca cannabis and hemp are some of the main ones that we're familiar with. Um, and some of the research on rice is actually really interesting. Uh, they found that when, because it's a hyperaccumulator, when the uh, SI was not present in the soil at high enough levels, the plant in uh, trying to accumulate the silicon will actually uh, take up more uh, higher levels of arsenic. And we hear about arsenic in rice all the time. So if you can raise the levels of silicon in your uh, in your soil that re that would reduce the amount of arsenic uptake uh, in your cannabis plant in theory based on based on this concept uh, another great thing about silicon is it moves through the xylem not the phloem so it doesn't flow out of the leaf when you do foliar applications so silicon just has all of these benefits we should absolutely be using it in our garden and my next post will be talking about the different forms of it because it can get really confusing you hear people talk about uh, silicilic acid monosilicilic acid um, uh, silicates uh, silicon dioxide uh, biogenic silica so I'll talk about that next but I wanted to just talk about the benefits first uh, comment below with any thoughts or your experiences or any other research you'd like to share thanks